I'm Bob Duhamel and today's topic is what is electricity? Now I could start out talking about the composition of matter and atoms and electrons and what's a metal and what's a non-metal, what's a conductor, what's a non-conductor, but to understand electricity we need to know what does electricity do and how can we manipulate it to make it useful to us. Electricity is a fluid. A fluid is something that you can make flow from one place to another. When we usually think of fluids we think of liquids like water. But gas, such as air, is also a fluid. And electricity is much more like air than it is like water because water is incompressible, but air or other gases are compressible, and electricity is quite compressible. If you have ever pumped air into a tire, you are already well on your way to understanding how electricity works. So what do we do there? We use a pump that takes air out of the atmosphere and puts it under tighter pressure so it compresses the air and forces it into the tire. And the more air we put into the tire, the more force it exerts on the walls of that tire, and we call that force air pressure. So we have established that air is a fluid, it can be moved around, and it can be compressed, and when we compress it, it exerts pressure. So we have air pressure, and we have the movement of air. Another thing to consider is the hose that is taking the air from the pump to the tire. Is it a large hose, like this large soda straw? or a small hose like this small soda straw. Now if I try to push air through this large hose, it's a lot easier. In fact, if I blow through it, hardly any resistance to the flow of the air. But this smaller straw, clearly a lot more resistance to the flow of air. So we've established three parameters. We've got the flow of the air, we've got the pressure as we pack more air into a smaller place, and then we have resistance to the flow of that air through a hose or a tube. Electricity has the same properties. We can put electricity under pressure and we call that pressure voltage. So higher voltage means higher pressure. And when we allow that electricity to flow through a wire from one place to another, we get a flow of electricity. We get the fluid flowing from one place to another. And depending on the properties of that wire that it's going through, depending on its size, large, versus small, and the composition it's made of, we get more or less resistance to that motion. And another consequence of that, if we have little resistance, when I blow through that, the air goes through pretty freely. But when I blow through the greater resistance, I get more pressure backed up behind it than through the less resistance. So when we force electricity through electrical resistance, we get a backup of voltage behind that resistance where the electricity goes in, and a lower voltage, or lower pressure, where the electricity comes out. So with air, we have the parameters of pressure, how much pressure is that air exerting, meaning how close are the molecules of air packed together and how hard are they trying to fly apart, and how much force do they exert as they try to fly apart. And we also have the flow of air, which we can flow so much air through so much area, and the more pressure we exert, the more air we can flow through a certain resistance. And of course we have the resistance offered by whatever hose, and that resistance depends on the diameter of the hose and the length of the hose too. A longer hose will give you more resistance than a shorter hose. In electricity, we also have pressure, we call that voltage, and we have a current flow which we call amperage. So we get so much electrical current flowing past a certain point, we call that a certain number of amps. And then we also have resistance to that flow, which we measure in a unit called ohms. So electricity acts almost exactly like compressed air. There are a couple of exceptions. For example, whenever we have electrical current moving, there's always a magnetic field around that moving current. And if the current stops, the magnetic field collapses. The cause of this magnetic field is something we'll talk about another day. But it's always there, so electricity is stationary, no current flow, no magnetic field around it, but when it moves, we get a magnetic field around it. And likewise, if we move a wire through a magnetic field, it'll make electricity move through that wire. So there's an intimate connection between electricity and magnetism. In fact, they're actually the same thing. We'll talk about that another day. Another exception is that with air, I have a huge reservoir of fluid around me. So if I want to have a pneumatic system, let's say such as an air tool system, I can suck air out of the atmosphere, pressurize it, send it through my tool to do some work, and then release it back to the atmosphere. Electricity, though, cannot flow through normal air, and so we have to have conductors, such as metal wires, to contain it. 
So an electrical system is a closed system, sort of like your blood circulation system. I have a pump in the middle that pumps air out of my heart, circulates it around my body to do its job, and then back to the heart and circulates over and over again. An electrical system is also a closed system, so we have electricity circulating around and around. So we have a pump, such as a battery, which acts like a pump, which circulates the electricity around the system. Now that brings us to our next topic, which is, what is an electrical circuit? Well, as I explained, electricity is a closed system, so it must be pumped around a circuit to do its work. So let's take a look at the pneumatic system again. We have a pump, which is able to suck air in. It blows the air back out, and let's say it goes to a air tool of some sort. Makes that air tool do some work, and then the air escapes back to the atmosphere. So the air is sucked in from the atmosphere, goes through a tool. We're going to have a storage tank in here too for our convenience, but it's not absolutely necessary. And then the air does its work and then escapes to the atmosphere. But an electrical circuit is a closed system. So we have something like a battery and a wire that will take us to, oh, let's say a light bulb. And so the electricity pumps out of the battery does its work through the light bulb, or what other circuit we have here, and then returns back to the battery and circulates around and around. Now, of course, it's not really the same electricity. If we get down to the nitty gritty, the electricity coming into the bottom side of the battery here is not the same electricity going out the top. It's not really going round and round, and the battery eventually runs out of energy and can no longer pump electricity around. But for all intents and purposes, if you examine an electrical circuit, you cannot tell that it's not the same electricity being pumped round and round. It takes a long time before we can discern that it's not. So an electrical circuit consists of a pump, such as a battery or a generator, that exerts a pressure that forces the electricity around the circuit. We do a little work in the middle somewhere, such as a light bulb or a computer, who knows what it is, and then we suck the electricity back into the pump to be circulated again. Another good example of a system that's like an electrical system is a refrigeration system. And this has another property that stands out that's just a little bit more like an electrical circuit. So in the case of the refrigeration system, we have a pump that pumps refrigerant out one side into a series of pipes. And through another series of pipes, and back to the pump. So it pumps this fluid around and round. Now one critical thing about the refrigeration system is there's a restriction in the middle between the two sets of pipes. And what this restriction does is, as I demonstrated with the soda straw, in fact, I'll demonstrate it with the big soda straw. I blow through the soda straw, nothing, no back pressure. But if I pinch it down, I get quite a bit of back pressure. So I get an increase in pressure where the fluid hits the restriction and a drop in pressure on the other side. So there's a difference in pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So by putting this restriction here, we get the same thing. We get high pressure. And over here we get a low pressure. Now with a refrigeration system, what that does is we pressurize the refrigerant fluid and it gets hot. And then we blow a fan across it to take that heat away, so it radiates heat away from it. Then when it expands back to the original pressure, it's lost energy, so it gets cold, and it absorbs heat on the other side. And then we blow a fan across that to extract the cold. So a refrigerator will have one coil on the outside, may or may not have a fan on it, an air conditioner does, but a refrigerator may just use the convection to get rid of the heat, but we get rid of that heat, takes heat out of the system, then we expand it, and on the inside of the refrigerator, or the cold side of the air conditioner, we blow a fan across that to take the cold air, because this will get cold when the fluid expands, and we get hot on one side and cold on the other. And what makes this even more like an electrical circuit is we have this restriction, which acts like the main part of a circuit. It acts like a resistor or whatever else, and that causes us to have a high voltage or high pressure on one side and a low pressure on the other. So if I go back to my 
light bulb example, here's my battery, wire over to the light bulb, back to the battery, I get a high voltage where the electricity enters the light bulb and a lower voltage where the electricity exits the light bulb. So that's the nature of an electrical circuit. We have a pump, something that does some work, a high pressure where the electricity enters and a low pressure where the electricity exits. And any place we look in a circuit where we have a resistance, we are going to have a higher pressure where the current enters the resistance and a lower pressure where the current exits. Now one more thing before we move on, and that is, which way is the electricity flowing? And the truth is, it's hard to tell. For many years, through observation, scientists thought that electricity went from positive to negative. But then Joseph Thomson came along and proved that electricity actually goes from negative to positive. We know now that it's movement of electrons going from the negative side of a battery to the positive side. Well, what do we do now? Because we've already established positive and negative. We, we expect a fluid to go from a high pressure to a low pressure. We'd already established positive and negative and assumed that the electricity was going from positive to negative. Then Thompson comes along and says, haha, it's actually going the other direction. I can prove it because I isolated the electrons, shot them at a piece of glass. Uh, you can see that in my previous lecture. We talk about the Crookes tube and Thompson showing that electricity actually flows the opposite direction. So what do we do? Do we relabel positive as negative and negative as positive? Or do we just say, well, you know, um, that we just go negative to positive now? Or do we cover our ears and close our eyes and say, la, 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 and just pretend that the electricity still goes from positive to negative? Well, it turns out that most of the electronics world pretends that electricity goes from positive to negative. There are still some camps that insist on the negative to positive, but they are becoming fewer and fewer. So in academia and the electronics industry, we take our battery or whatever else is producing our voltage, and we have positive, we have negative, and even though we know it's backwards, we say that the electricity goes from positive to negative through our circuit. Why? Because it just makes it easier to analyze the circuits. We have the electricity going from a higher pressure to a lower pressure, that makes perfect sense, and as we go through the circuit, we still have, at any point in the circuit, we have electricity going from the higher pressure to a lower pressure, and it just makes it easier to analyze what's going on in the circuit. So what have we established? We have established that electricity is a fluid and it acts like air or any other gas. Electricity is compressible. We can force it under pressure into a smaller area. We'll talk more about that when we get into capacitors. And when we push it into a smaller area, it exerts more pressure trying to escape. And we call that pressure voltage. So we have a fluid that has a pressure we call voltage. We can make that fluid flow from one place to another. We call that flow electrical current, which we measure in a unit called amps. We'll talk a little more about that another time. And then we also have resistance. When we are moving electricity through a wire, the properties of that wire, what the wire is made of, how big around it is, how long it is, all affect how much resistance that wire is going to have to that current flow. So we have a fluid, we have fluid pressure, we have fluid flow, and we have resistance that restricts that fluid flow. Also, we established that when electricity flows into a resistance, we get a backup of pressure or a backup of voltage where the current enters the resistance and a drop in voltage where the current exits the resistance. We also established that electrical circuits are closed systems. We can't just take electricity out of the air, pump it somewhere and do some work with it. We have to circulate it in a closed system. So we have a battery that pumps electricity and we say it pumps the electricity out of the positive side to the negative side. And by the way, that's called conventional current as opposed to electron current from the other camp. But we assume that the electricity pumps from positive around to negative. And when that electricity enters a resistance, we get a backup of voltage where the current enters the resistance and a drop in voltage where the current exits the resistance. And that's basically what electricity is and what an electrical circuit is. And everything we talk about electricity from now on is going to be based on that premise. So up to the most complicated circuits we'll look at down the road, we are still going to see that electricity acts like a fluid and has the properties we just talked about. And we'll be seeing that over and over again.
If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe and hit that gray bell because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.